Hey, what's up, everybody? So in today's video, I'd actually like to delve more into a broad topic, something that I feel like is very important to relay to a lot of players that are planning to go into the competitive scene, or at least try to understand from a conceptual standpoint how this topic works and how you should essentially find it when you get to a point where you want to go for long-term success or sustainability. The topic that I'd like to talk about is the power of group dynamics in competitive gaming, especially when it comes to understanding how to play towards a team and that chemistry needed in order to perform at the highest level. Unfortunately, what I tend to see quite a bit in a lot of esports nowadays is toxicity is heavily apparent, people don't seem to really know each other at a deep level, and things are not exactly the most smooth when it comes to understanding how to play towards each other. It's a lot of petty arguments and conflict that could easily be avoided if communication was a little bit better, which essentially boils down to knowing the person a little bit more. And it's it sucks to be able to see that because I feel like a lot of these teams are missing out on the highest potential or their greatest potential, especially when it comes to the ceiling towards achieving the highest level of skill as a team. Now, let me explain. When it comes to team dynamics, when it comes to group dynamics, right, success really boils down to how long and sustainable a team is when it comes to vibe, chemistry, and overall approach. When you have a team that's built from the ground up and that's willing to essentially have each other's backs through the thick and thin, and on top of that, learn each other and deep dive into how each other plays, approach-wise, skill-wise, mental-wise, dynamic-wise, it becomes a lot harder to understand from an opponent's point of view of how to beat that team. There's a certain level that you reach, a certain echelon that becomes completely different compared to, uh, you know, if, if you were to just kind of play with other people who you don't really know, but have very high technical skill or have really powerful formulaic approaches. Because here's the thing, right? When you really understand how to learn to play towards somebody else and they reciprocate the same thing to you, a lot of your plays become instinctive. It becomes so unbelievably natural that it looks like you're in a constant flow state with each other when it comes to making plays together. And in turn, it leads to almost borderline miraculous plays that just end up working out in a natural way. Especially against people who tend to stagger a lot, especially when it comes to being split, when chaos tends to ensue and cause complete fragmentation when it comes to split-second decisions across other teams who don't have that mesh or chemistry that other people have really worked to refine. I really want to communicate this out there because I feel like as more esports teams continue to foster the idea that you need to be toxic, you need to be ultra micro with your team to make sure everyone understands what you need, what they need to do, you need to always keep calming over their heads and just leaning over their shoulders, trying to make sure that they're doing what you think is best, and make a lot of these masses believe that that's just how things should be in order to be at the highest level. Now, coming from someone who has been at the highest level in multiple genres of gaming and has won a, like tournaments before, that's not the play. That really isn't. You shouldn't be focusing a lot on being that type of leader or that type of team player. It should be focused on open-mindedness. Because open-mindedness legitimately leads to innovation, and innovation leads to absolute success and few steps ahead everybody else you essentially create metas you become so much more efficient in being able to manipulate how the game works and how you should play towards certain maps certain play styles certain approaches certain updates for example right and a constant perspective towards optimizing being passionate and motivated to find new formulas and strats and even small tweaks that change the approach entirely for example it's it's important to have that foundation and in order to have that it's intrinsic to have a good team 
especially when you're playing a team game. Uh, as a, It's a given, right? It's a given. You have to be playing a team game. <laughs> but I'd also like to contest and as well put in a point of contention towards even solo play, because that's a thing. Even MMA fighters have support systems and teams. They may not be the ones taking the punches or punching other people, but they're there to help that MMA fighter work out their kinks, really get them to understand what it, they need in order to actually succeed against another person who fights in a specific way. And a lot of those guys have different specialties, different understandings of what value they can bring to the table in order to help support the person actually in the octagon. Same thing applies to a lot of games as well. Hell, it may actually be a two-prong or a double-layered perspective where a player who plays in a team-based game has a support system that only focuses on understanding and, fo and improvising and improving that specific player's play as they continue to analyze and work with him specifically, and then that player has their team for team mesh, team dynamic and chemistry, working how to instinctively play towards each other at a level that doesn't even require too much communication to even do. Here's the cool thing, though, and I feel like a lot of people don't really see or don't really get, because it, it doesn't come often, and it's one of those things that's really rare. It's the idea of playing to each other at a high level, but not really talking while it's happening. I know, it sounds preposterous, but trust me when I say this. There comes a point in time when you get to a point where your team chemistry is at almost the ceiling, the ultimate pinnacle, and you're playing with another friend who you've played with for years, or maybe multiple. You guys know, like the back of your hand, how your friend plays, and essentially what you can trust them to do when shit goes haywire for you, and know that they will be there for you to back you up every step of the way, for example, when it's reciprocated. Since you know that already, there are certain things that you'll do from initiating and disengaging and engaging again that you really don't have to say. You don't have to communicate that whatsoever. It literally just becomes comms that revolve around, oh, guy on the right is weak. Oh, guy on me. Oh, I'm leaving, I'm leaving, I'm healing, I'm healing. And it doesn't have to be, J-Man, go right, left, side, and then jump over, cover, and then reload, and then make sure you need to shoot this guy. It doesn't become ultra micro. And you don't really have to delve too much in the specifics. It opens your mind and mental up for so much more play. And because when you have a really high chemistry, when you really have a really strong mental and dynamic with another person, because comms are more free, it means you can actually delve more into the psychological warfare that really showcases true prowess over a specialty, whether it be a game or anything in the competitive scene of whatever humans do competitively. The mental game, being able to anticipate or counter them and play a few steps ahead almost every time. That is the pinnacle, and when when that gets to, when you get to a point where that's the case, oh my god, you see the game in a completely different light, and then all of a sudden it's literally like playing chess. It's a mental exercise that's super fun and makes the highest level addicting to the greatest extent. Because when you're playing against other people and you're too busy worrying about your technical skill, it become it can become really frustrating. But when you're when you got the technical skill pat down, you're playing with your friends and you you got a deep passion for the game, you're motivated to be good and both of you are really, really good already, just foundationally, and you're just improvising on your mental game, oh my gosh. Two people cycling back and forth, like one initiates, gets low, cycles back, but the other guy pushes up, and you guys are not even saying anything. It's like you're fighting against a dual-headed cyclops. It's almost border it's borderline impossible sometimes to kill people when especially when you're trying to one v one a guy and a guy just comes in and cycles through him and you're just you're just dead because well <laughs> it's a two v one. It's interesting because those aspects apply heavily to various different corners of video games and competitive. People I feel like really need to get to a point where they foster that more. Really showcase that as emphasize importance across competitive anything. Because I feel like a lot of people lack that. 
it becomes a little bit too much about ego and technical, and unfortunately, that's not how you win. Yes, it's up to an extent, but at some point in time, there are going to be places where you're going to need to apply more in order to truly have an edge over other teams. And that is truly a practical and realistic edge. It, it's purely logical in every single regard to be able to understand another teammate to a level where you don't have to calm too much. Less brain power means more brain power for other things. And then boom, bada bing, bada boom. It becomes not only fun, less stress, but at the same time, it becomes such a game about approach and understanding and intelligence and all that. And it's thrilling and it's great. And it really brings that fire that you tend to not really see as much, especially when games kind of die down a little bit. It's, uh, it's unfortunate. <laughs> that fire is what brings the excitement. Especially when you know you're going against another team, for example, that also has that level of team dynamic. Oh my gosh, the fights with that other team become absolutely insane. And it's not even bad when you lose, because it's you learn so much just going against other people's stylistic choices towards competitive, or just overall fighting and adapting and accommodating for other teams. It's so interesting to be able to analyze people from a perspective where they're playing at a very high level in a team setting. It's very impressive to also see. And there's there's just, there's a certain beauty to it. There's an art to it. It's like a dance. It's a dance at the highest level. You're just going crazy. But anyways, that's that's pretty much it. That that is the power of team dynamics and group dynamics within the competitive scene and you know, hopefully at some point down the line, I'll, I'll be able to see more of that. We'll be able to see more of that because the more of that there is in the competitive, the more fun and the better those games will end up being. Passion. <laughs> Shit's awesome, man. But anyways... Thank you guys once again for taking the time to watch this video. If you enjoyed, please like and subscribe. It would really help me out in the long run. But once again, thank you so much for taking the time, and I hope you guys have a fantastic night. Take care, and I'll see you in the next one.